Hello, middle schoolers. Um, Hi. You guys are doing well. Um, my name is uh, Isaiah, and I help lead the youth and family ministry here in Houston. And I'm with. And, oh, my name is Amber. <laughs> we can keep it. Um, my name is Amber, and I too help lead the youth and family ministry. <laughs> and we are really excited to be uh, doing this series with you guys uh, for the next five weeks. We are going to be focusing on Jesus' last moments yeah so i have a question for you all uh have you ever forgotten something um i know that sounds like a silly question because of course we all have but maybe it was your friend's birthday or your parents big anniversary or a homework assignment well we've all been there right i know i have for sure um i'll tell you guys a little story um when i was little when I was tiny tiny I went to the Disney store which I don't even know if they have those anymore but I went to the Disney store with my mom and my sister and my sister's best friend and um my mom bought me this stuffed heffalump which heffalumps are from Winnie the Pooh they look like elephants but they're purple and they're very cute and so I loved my stuffed heffalump his name is Lumpy and um, it was like so, such a big deal, right? And so then we immediately, like two days later, went to go visit my grandma in Ohio. And I, you know, spent the week living it up with my little heffalump, with my lumpy. And, uh, and then when we left Ohio, I realized that I left lumpy at my grandma's house in Ohio. And I lived in Massachusetts at the time. It was very far away, and I was really sad. And my grandma was very old, so we didn't want to ask her to mail it because we were nervous that she wouldn't be able to do it correctly. And so um, I had to wait for a really long time, um, just like several months before my my mom and I would go back and visit my grandma again and so I could get lumpy. Um, and so I was just really sad about forgetting that. And I felt like, oh, I let Lumpy down. Um, but ultimately, forgetting something like I did usually isn't that big of a deal, right? It all ended up fine. I got a funny story about it. I still have Lumpy. He's right here. Um, he's a little bit worse for wear these days. But... Um, so it's not that big of a deal, right? But forgetting other things, bigger things, right? Uh, those can have bigger consequences. If we forget our best friend's birthday, then their feelings get hurt. You know, if we forget to turn in a major assignment or study for a big test, our grades will suffer. If we forget to do our chores, then we'll get grounded probably. Um, no matter what it is, we all have a tendency to forget. It's one thing we all have in common. That's why we use objects to help us remember the significant meanings of things, events, and people in our lives. So take Lumpy, for example. Um, for most people, he's just a normal, everyday, kind of gross um, heffalump, right? But, and there's nothing special about him. But for me, he reminds me of special family memories and times that I spent with my family and that my mom loves me to give me a special gift, right? And uh, this object right here is very meaningful to me because he helps me remember the love of my family. Um, so you see, we all use reminders so that we don't forget things that are important to us. We use reminders in our notebooks or alerts on our phones, I know I do that all the time, or lists in our planners to remind us of the things we need to remember. It's why we hold on to things that remind us of important people or big experiences in our lives. We take pictures and collect shells and record videos on vacation so that we can remember the fun that we had on that trip. We give out trophies to winning teams so that they can display them to remember their victory. Uh, we can hold on to things that belonged to loved ones who have passed away because it reminds us of them. We do it because we know how easy it is to forget. And the same is true when it comes to our faith. I think if we're being honest, we'd all say that we sometimes forget about Jesus too. 
think about it. When things are going well in our lives, it's easy to forget how much we need Jesus. Sometimes we move through our days without thinking of him at all. And when life feels hard or frustrating, we do the same thing. In those seasons, it's easy to forget the ways we've seen God work in our lives in the past. We forget about what he's done before and only see the struggle that's right in front of us. Now you must be sitting here thinking, why is that such a big deal? I mean, if God is with us always, why does it matter if we don't remember? Well, think back to what we said earlier, to remember the things that are important to us. And if Jesus is one of those important parts of our lives, we want to remember him. We want to make sure that things like his love and his faithfulness and his compassion and his sacrifice for us are things we hold on to in our minds. Isaiah, take it away. Thank you, Amber. You know, <laughs> Jesus knew that his time left on earth was limited and he wanted to make the most of every moment. And so that's why Jesus saved some of his best wisdom for his last days with his followers. And the good news for us is that many of those followers will share stories about what Jesus said and did so others could learn from him too. And a guy named Luke, although he never met Jesus face to face, thoroughly investigated people's stories, observations and experiences to understand what was said and what Jesus did. And then he went and wrote about it. So in Luke 22, Luke tells us how Jesus used something familiar to, re to remind his followers of something really important. And as the story opens, the disciples were, were getting ready to celebrate the Passover. Back then, the Passover uh, was a time of celebration or a celebration meal that helped Jewish people remember something God had done for them long ago. And so hundreds of years before this meal, the disciples were going to have with Jesus, God did something really cool. He rescued his people, the Israelites, and he rescued them out of slavery. And when that happened, the Israelites celebrated Passover to, to remember the way God had protected them and set them free. And it was such a big deal, even thousands of years later, Jewish people today still celebrate the Passover meal to remember the event. And, and it was as his Passover meal with his followers that Jesus chose to give some of his final in, in instructions. <clears throat> and it reads in Luke 22, verse 14 to 16, when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Jesus was excited to spend the last celebration with his followers. He was eager to share one of, one of his last moments with his closest friends. Jesus knew what was ahead. He knew he was about to suffer and die on the cross. And he knew he was about to leave his disciples overwhelmed with fear and sadness. And because of that, he wanted to make sure that they would remember all the things he taught them. So here's what he did. In Luke 22, verse 17 to verse 20, it reads, after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in re remembrance of me. In the same way, after, af after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So what was so important that Jesus used one of his last moments with his followers to, to say it, remembrance. Jesus told his followers to remember. He knew that tough times were 
ahead in those tough times would make it hard for the disciples to remember all Jesus had taught them. It would make it hard to remember the things he did and the way he loved them. That's why in one of his last moments, Jesus told them to remember. Remember that I am for you and remember I am coming back. And guess what? He's saying the same thing even to us, even to today. Amen? Why is it important for us to remember Jesus and what he's done for us? Because when we forget, we can start to feel anxious, afraid, alone. We might even be tempted to think that Jesus isn't with us or for us at all. When life isn't going the way we hoped, it's important to remember what Jesus did so that we know he's still with us and for us. In other words, we remember what Jesus has done to know he is still working. And what's cool about this story from Luke is that Jesus actually gave us a great way to remember him. While the Israelites used Passover to remember what God had done, we have communion. That's what Jesus was demonstrating when he broke bread with his disciples that day. And when the and when and when we participate um, in communion, we are remembering together what Jesus has done and is doing in our lives. With his disciples, Jesus used bread and wine during communion. Maybe he used them because they were delicious or what happened to be on the table. Maybe he chose them because they were common, everyday parts of the culture back then. Jesus knew that his followers would, would encounter bread and wine often in their days. And when they did, he wanted them to remember him. They were no longer just things to eat and drink. Now they, now they, now they would be symbols of remembrance. It's a lot like how, um, it's a lot like even how Amber uh, uh, shared her stuffed animal, whom I am forgetting the name of, um, but even how- It's Lumpy. Lumpy, thank you. (laughs) Even Lumpy, um, you know, uh, she has a personal memory tied to Lumpy, but every time she thinks of Lumpy, she thinks about that personal memory and she thinks about how it makes her feel. And, you know, when, when, when we remember what Jesus has done for us, we remember what Jesus has done to know he is still working. Think of it like this. When you remember the championship game you won last year, it makes it easier to push through the pain of practice. When you, re- when you remember the good times you had with a friend who moved away, it makes it easier to look forward of the time you'll see them again. And when life gets hard or you feel discouraged or you aren't sure what plan is or what the plan is for your life, you can, re- you can remember what Jesus has done for you in the past to remind you that he is still working for you in the present. So, what would it look different or, or so what, so what would look different about our lives if we made a point to read, to remember what Jesus has done for us? Well, I think it would change the way we see circumstances, good and bad. It would help us see God working in the good things and give us hope that he is still working in the tough times. And here's how we can start. Make a list. Make a list of all the things you have seen God do in your life or the lives of others close to you. It can be things that you're thankful for, good things you've experienced or relationships that meant a lot to you. Maybe you've seen God provide for you and your family or or for a friend in a big way. Even if you're not sure, write it down. Let the list in encourage you and give you hope that Jesus is still working. And two, choose a reminder. In this in the same way Jesus chose bread and wine as reminders 
for his followers. Choose something in your life to be a reminder of what Jesus is doing in your life. Maybe it's an everyday object or a daily habit you have. For me, uh, it's Starbucks. <laughs> Whenever I get <laughs> double <laughs> mocha chip frappuccino, <laughs> I take a minute to remember what Jesus has done and is doing. And it's simple. It's a simple routine. You know, it's, it's a simple way just to remember the not so simple work Jesus is doing in my own life. So today, remember this. We, re we remember what Jesus has done to know he is still working. Um, and as you go into your week and discuss things with your family, um, I want you to think about this question. What is one thing that makes me remember what Jesus has done? Um, or what is one thing that makes remembering what Jesus has done for me difficult to do? So what's making it hard for you to remember what Jesus has done? Um, that's all we have for you guys today. We hope that you have a great day and hopefully we can see you soon. Do you want to add anything, Isaiah? <laughs> I want to say middle schoolers, we hope you guys have a fantastic week.